Well, hey friends, welcome back to the cabin. It's been a minute since I've done one of these videos, but it just seems like that uh, there's so much going on up here that I just don't have time to work, film, edit, and get it out. And I bought a new tool that I think is going to help me out on the mortises of the post and beams of the timber frame workshop. So I'll meet you down there and we'll take a look at it. I apologize because it's a little bit windy today and I'm not sure how this is going to edit out, but uh, I picked up a set of Irwin um, Forstner bits that are really nice. I'll show them to you here. They range everywhere from one quarter to an inch and five eighths. It looks like they go in eighth inch increments. Uh, yeah, pretty much. And then down here again is a quarter, so I've got two quarters, but then they go up a quarter at a time all the way up to this is the one I was after, the two inch. Yeah, like I say, this is the one that grabbed my attention right here. Now, the one that I have that I use all the time that you all see me use is this one right here, which is an inch and a half. Um, but I really wanted the two inch and I was gonna purchase this one, but then I just went ahead and spent a little bit more money. I think I spent $55 on these right here, but they're really nice. Cause like I say, they go all the way from, I got two quarters, but I got quarter, half, three quarter, one inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and two inch over here. Then on this side, of course, I got another quarter, then I got three eighths, five eighths, seven eighths, inch and an eighth, and then an inch and three eighths, and inch and five eighths. But uh, yeah, I think that this is really gonna help me out because when I actually bore into the wood, I'll be touching both sides right there, and on my six inch, uh, mortises I can actually put uh, just three holes I believe and I'll have a whole lot of that dug out and I won't be making a zigzag pattern trying although that worked really well I believe this is going to work better then you know my son he actually picked this up for me a while back and we actually gave one out uh, or two of them away I think on our giveaways and I'm thinking about doing it again but this has got, it's basically a tool pouch. You can either roll it up or you can carry it like this. Um, but what I thought I would do is I stuck a few things in here that I use a lot. That way I can have it out here and it can be put away um, with all the tools and I can add other things to that. But I've got some things, like I said, that um, right here, I got some chisels, some small chisels in there. And then I've got a lot of marking type material. I've got, you know, we call this, it's actually keel, but it's uh, marking, you know, black and red. Got the, another pencil right here. Uh, different types of marking materials. So, thought I would keep all those together because this is way underutilized. But uh, yeah, I'm thinking about doing another giveaway and giving a couple of these away. If this is something that you would like, uh, leave me a comment down there in the section below. Well, you can tell that I've got quite a bit of material lying here. I've actually got some 6 by 6s for the posts. I've got a couple of beams here. I've got a 6 by uh, 10 underneath here that's ready to go. That log lying there is going to be one of the roof rafters because I'm going to splice them basically in the middle. And I'll tell you what, it takes some time to dig out the mortises, actually lay it all out dig it out but I'll tell you once you do that and you put it all together I don't think there's anything that compares it's really really nice you know I've had the question and the comment actually posed to me before is why did I not use like a 2x6 here instead of using on the others I used a 2x8 then I decided right here I would use a 2x10 so why do I do this well this is the sill plate that actually holds the building down to the foundation which this is my concrete pillar, right? So I've got this bolted down in there. But what this also allows me to do is to set my um, floor joist and it gives it something to set on. I'm still gonna go ahead and put the hanger on here, but this just gives it some added material for it to set on and support that whole floor joist that's going across. Now, I'm only spanning a little over eight feet right here, which is not a big deal, but I've got to remember that this is where I'm going to house a lot of material, so it's going to be heavy, and I wanted to beat this area up just a little bit. But that is why I learned this 
uh, many, many years ago when I first started uh, trying to learn how to frame. Uh, somebody showed me that and I thought, well, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we're really not that far when you stop and think about it from being done with this workshop because I've got one section here left and then one more after that. So it takes about a week to do one section. So that's about two weeks right there. Then I would say maybe two weeks setting the rafters and I think that I might have enough cut that will go on the back side. just have to do the front. There's only one other post to set and that's this corner post and I think I'm going to make it 8 by 8 because I've got a 24 foot beam that I'm going to be building right here that's going to go up in that mortise and connect into that corner post. So like I said, I think I'm going to go ahead and make it 8 by 8 may put a little bit of a design on it. Um, then this section right here is going to be open. I'm not going to have any bottom beam right here. I want to have access to the sawmill this way and access coming in this way. So that wall right there will end right here. I'll have one more bottom beam that will go across between right here to make everything match and look right. Then we'll have a door between this post right here and that one that will slide or be on hinges. Either one I haven't quite made up my mind yet. But this will be access into the storage area so that when I'm sawing on the sawmill I can just take it right off slide or open these doors up, take it in, stack it up, and be done with it, and then it will dry um, as I mill more lumber. And so then when I do projects, I can actually come down here to the storage. It will already be cut up, and then I can take it and use it to build. There may be some specialty items that I need to do, but for the most part, I'll have uh, the basics uh, right here and ready to go. You know, I'll store things like 1x2s, 1x4s, 1x6s, uh, maybe a few 1x8s or 1x10s, though, because I can always cut. The only thing is, if I'm cutting something fresh without storing it here, it's going to be green, um, and chances are more likely that it might crack if I used it. Then I'll have uh, 2x4s, 2x6s, 2x8s, 2x10s, maybe a few 2x12s, but I'll stock basic things like that. So, like I said, if I start on a project, all I'll have to do is run out here, grab it, and we can begin. You know, another thing that came to mind, if I planned it right, I might even be able to incorporate this corner section into the workshop area and just use that section right there, um, which is about nine feet across. Okay, the, the floor joists are a little bit more than eight foot long, but it'll be about uh, between eight and nine feet wide this way, and if I just use the last section right there, it would be 12 feet long. If I stack the lumber vertically, then there's a whole lot of storage area right back there for the lumber. Like I said, I could incorporate another little corner area right here as being part of the workshop. So yeah, not a bad little price on this uh, $55 set right here because if you bought those individually, just think how much you would pay for them. I can't remember exactly what I paid for that inch and a half bit. Now you can get some cheaper, um, and you can get some a lot more expensive, but this Irwin is the one that I've been using and you all have seen it and it has done a really good job and I'm not sponsored by them or anything. So I decided, like I said, I would go ahead. Now Lord knows I may never use half of these, but I do have them in case that I need them and it didn't cost me that much more to go ahead and get the complete set. So friends, I've got a whole lot of work ahead of me that I need to get busy on for the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.